Hey, how's everybody doing? Whew. Good gracious. Good gracious. Gotta get cozy. We're gonna be here a while. Who's ready? Huh? Who is ready? I'm excited. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. Hey, good to see everybody in chat. Matt, good to see you. You were one of the first ones in here. Thanks for the host, by the way. Uh, Magic Mistress, hey, what's going on? Crown, Rose, good to see you. Lovely, lovely Rose. Uh, Kitsune, hey, what's going on? Any face, Link, good to see you too. Oh, a rabid hobo. Good to see you too. Oh, who's ready to learn? Gats, hey, good to see you. I love your name. I love that name. Every time I see that name. Corminian, hey, what's going on? What is going on? What is going on? We've got... I'm, I'm, I'm yours for the next... Until until you deem we're done at the q and A, I'm yours all night. All right, I'm yours all night. We're gonna rock and roll tonight. Uh, your boy, hey, what's going on, Bron? Hey, what's going on? Good to see you, Meaty. Good to see you too. I'm trying to decide what mouse to use. See, during the show, I use this little Microsoft thing. It's real silent, you know, so you don't hear the clicky clicks of the of the twelve button. But you know what? We'll just um. I think we'll rock the 12 button. Feel a little more comfortable with that. Feel a little more comfortable with that. But anyway, oh, University of Coruscant. Hey, what's going on, Sonny? Good to see you. Rock fan Chris, what's up? Oh, zombie Chris, don't worry, Jibs. I'll be gentle. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, good gracious. Well, um, and again, and I'll post this here in chat. It's going to be kind of, um, to everyone who's watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to be interacting with chat a lot. Uh, the outline for what you're watching right now is going to be in the description and also the show note template, which the chat will hear. You guys will get later. It will be in the description as well. All right. Titus, hey, what's going on, Caddy? Hello. But uh, all right. So my friends, you know, I don't want to waste any time. You waited 10 minutes. You you know, you've done the intro. Everyone here in chat. We're doing this live, by the way, everyone on YouTube at twitch.tv slash Podcast. Okay. And uh, I have been wanting to do this. Your camera is bouncing around. I know. Sorry, because that was that was me moving around. But uh, anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. And um, I'm at this place now in podcasting where I feel I want to teach. I want to help. I want people to achieve everything that they want to achieve in podcasting to help people understand the process, you know, what, what it means for good show notes. What does it mean to, you know, what, what gear, where do you even start, right? You know, like you have this passion, you have this desire. Jibs is so excited. I am excited. Uh, you have this passion, this desire, but you're like, I don't know what to do. And I want to give you tonight everything I wish I could have had. I want to, give, I want to make sure you have all the tools everything you could possibly need, okay? And so for everyone who's here in the uh, in the Twitch chat, I'm going to post this to you right now before we get started, okay? Workshop outline. This is what we're going to be rock, rocking with tonight, okay? So if you'd like to follow along, know where we're going, and then save this for yourself, please do so, okay? Please do so, all right? Now, uh, let's see. What else are we going to do here? Let's get this started. So, here's the format for the night. Okay? Here's what we're going to do. First up, we're going to talk gear. I want to make sure that everyone here understands gear, you know, getting started out. And I'm. this is coming from somebody that when I started podcasting, I was broke. Absolutely broke. And I'll never forget when I got my first microphone, which I'll, I'll be showing off here in a little bit. I've kept this mic forever. The, you know, that feeling you have of pride, right? And so everything we're going to be talking about tonight is from a low-budget standpoint. Granted, there are going to be some investments that, that you know, that's crucial that you can get to as soon as you can, okay? So we're going to talk gear. We're going to talk podcast hosting because there's a lot of people who don't understand what podcast hosting is, the different types of podcast hosting. I'm going to rec um, give you my recommendation, my per personal recommendation, uh, from from doing it all these years, who I use, why I use them. Uh, we're also going to be talking about, we're going to do the steps from very beginning 
from when you're sitting in your recliner, maybe you're watching a show. That's how I got started. I, uh, you know, I, or actually, I don't know, man, how did I get started? We'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, you know, wherever you're at and you're like, how do I get started doing a podcast? Well, we're going to go through the steps, okay, from um, giving you the order from, you know, from recording to publishing, okay? Now, that being said, we're also going to be talking about host versus co-host. That's a thing, okay? It's There's two different jobs there. And it's very important that you understand what is what, okay? And where you fit in that, where you feel you fit, okay? Um, especially if you're doing a podcast with multiple hosts, okay? And finally, uh, or not finally, then I'm going to give you 10 tips and tricks, things that I have learned, just my personal experience, to help put your best foot forward. And those of you in the outline, you can already see those, okay? Next, uh, let's see, we're ending this with a QA. and a and we will go with this q and I will not stop until every question is answered. So while I'm doing this, please, 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 everybody who is here on Twitch it, while you're watching, make note of your questions, okay? Cash wasn't able to join me tonight, so I'm running this um, solo, which is fine because that was pretty much the plan, but he was going to be my question fielder, okay? So what I'm going to need from you is to kind of work with me, and when it comes to the Q&A... You know, we'll get we'll get to it. Save your questions, and I'll tell you the format to post it, just so I can see it. Okay, just because Twitch chat's moving. All right. So, let's get started. Okay, friends. So, podcasting. You know, it's this, it's this art form that is so incredibly big in the world today, right? You know, when you when now, granted, we do a pod a podcast in the gaming sphere. We're really Twitch is the main focus nowadays. But outside of gaming, I mean unless you have a household name, you know, you're so, you know, you're a top streamer, you're a top person at a company or, you know, IGN, etc., PC gamer, you know, it's it, it could be tough for you, so you need to find a way to incorporate your Twitch stream. But outside of doing a podcast in gaming, it's huge. Especially for dr- uh, dramatic readings and and you know, sports podcasts, news podcasts. You've got stuff from um, coming out from Top news uh, sources all over the world. You've got, um, you know, one of my personal favorites is the Joe Rogan podcast. I love that show. Love that show. You know, so you've got interview shows, right? And so you've got all these options. And and you just, you know, you're like, how do I fit into all this? How do I, you know, when I got started, it was 2012. And by the way, to everyone who is here watching right now, my name is Jordan Butts. I go by Jibs for short whenever I'm on the air, whenever I'm doing things in the podcasting sphere. And um, I just, it was a time in 2011, 2012, when this was pre-stream. Like, I cut my teeth in podcasting before streaming was a thing. Before, you know, it was, you know, what it is today and what it's become, okay? So, you know, I learned a lot. You see, you see the, the kind of, you know, the gaming sphere change, podcasting change, and just grow, and then just skyrocket. Just take off, right? And so... For me, it was just, I'm an arts, artsy kind of person. I enjoy that. And to me, it's, it just appealed to me. And I jumped in. And I'm going to tell you right now, before we move forward, there's a lot of things tonight I'm not going to dive super deep into, but I'm going to recommend you to YouTube videos because I'm going to tell you right now, starting out when you're podcasting, YouTube is your best friend, your absolute best friend friend. That's how I got started. And so I'm going to absolutely recommend the same thing to you. Okay. All right. So I've been around a while. I've done a lot of podcasts. <laughs> I don't know how many episodes, if I were to count how many episodes total at this point, it, it would be a lot. <laughs> It'd be a lot. Uh, I got started. My first show was the Outlaws Den SWOTOR PVP podcast. And then I moved on to Wildcast for Wildstar. I did Impact Radio for a local church here in town. I was a co-host on Smite Disciples. It was a podcast for the MOBA Smite. Um, I worked on Level Up Morning Show, worked on the Overwatch Initiative, and now here we are, the latest show that most people are watching or know me from nowadays, and that is the Lore Seekers Elder Scrolls Online podcast. And so I, I've been around. I've been around for a while. And now it's time to teach you. So let's get started. 
let's move into quite possibly the most important investment you will ever make in podcasting. And that is gear, right? Gear. So when you're getting started, you're like, what's the main thing? What's the main thing that you use when podcasting? And I'm going to get mine out right here while I talk about it. What's the main thing you use? Tell me. Tell me, Chet. Microphone. That's right. Microphone. All right? So this was my very first podcasting mic. This is a Samson C01U USB condenser mic. This microphone carried me all the way up until right at the beginning or halfway through the beginning of Lore Seekers. So that would have been five, six years. All right? And that's what you need to get started. A good, solid microphone. All right? Now I'm going to give you examples here and things that you can look at, okay? And if you're following along in the outline, I've even got bundle links for you, okay? There's, there's links there for you to follow. So microphones are the most important thing you could ever invest because here's something important that you need to understand right now whenever you get into podcasting. Your listeners, you've got five seconds to grab them. Maybe 30 if you're lucky. 30 seconds to get their attention, for them to stick around, listen to the whole episode. Now, someone who's new to your show, they can forgive un... Organized isn't the right, isn't the right word, but um, content that isn't been hasn't been um, kind of focused down to, to quality, all right? They can forgive content that's not at its best. Let's go with that. But what they can't forgive is an awful-sounding microphone, all right? Yeah, an amateur presentation. Yeah, they can forgive that. Thank you, chat. They can forgive that, okay? And uh, But you have to have a solid microphone. And I'm going to say this, and I may take some flack for it, but if you want to start a podcast, you can. Uh, if you can use a headset microphone if you want to. The sound quality is not going to be very good. But I would highly recommend before you do anything, because it's the greatest investment. And this is coming from someone who used the same mic up until you know I ended up upgrading to studio gear. You know, using this mic, this is the best investment you can ever make. All right. And so. What you need, to be honest with you, nowadays you have the best option in the whole wide world. You should use a USB microphone, okay? Now, I would also, I'm still a believer in Samson. They have newer upgraded models for those in the looking at the outline. I've got a bundle link there. Plus, they've got even newer ones than that, all right? The bundle link is just kind of to get you started. You know, when I got started, this thing came in a steel case. It came with a shock mount as well. And for those who don't know what a shock mount is, it's, it's a stand, well, it's a, accessory to a stand so when your mic sits here you know if you were to bump your mic you're not going to hear this you're not going to hear that on your mic because it's going to absorb it okay it's going to absorb that impact for you so it's important to have you know it's good to have it's good to have one of the best investments you can make for your microphone is what we call this is black here on the screen i'm sorry this is a windscreen all right so it's going to cut out the s's and the p's you know so if i get right up on this and right it's going to cut this out, all right? Now, that being said, get yourself a good USB microphone to get started, all right? You're looking at maybe a Samson. I, would, I still recommend that to this day. Quite possibly the most popular microphone nowadays, and I have one sitting right next to me, and that is a Blue Yeti, all right? That is a Blue Yeti. Very, very, very uh, affordable. Very affordable microphone. And to those who are sitting right here, let's go take a look at it, okay? Let's bring up the Blue Yeti on Amazon, all right? So right here, you can get a blue condenser blackout microphone for 108 bucks. 108 bucks, all right? It's an exceptional investment. Now, for those on a budget, and I have been there, trust me, that's how I got my start. That 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 price point can can be scary. Even just 110 bucks, I get it. I'm right there with you, okay? So, don't be afraid though. Start saving. Start saving, and then while you're saving, be doing the other things we're going to talk about, and that's studying, all right? So anyway, microphone. Get yourself a good microphone. That's important. Remember, your listeners can forgive amateur um, entertainment. 
they can't forgive is a bad sounding microphone. That's one of the best things that you can get, okay? Next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is recording software. You see, whenever you're recording, you know, when you're first starting out, you, you know, you're like, where do I even go? You know, like, what do I start with? And really, I, I say this all day long, one of the greatest free, best free recording software, I'm gonna tell you right now, you've heard this more times than you know, and that is Audacity for PC and Mac, all right? Now, if you do, if you are using a Mac, I would almost go as far to say that you pick something else, and that is called GarageBand. All right, I know there's people who still use GarageBand today, and they've been podcasting forever. All right, forever, and all these links are going to be in the outline as well. And so, it's very good place for you to get started and really cut your teeth into podcasting. Okay, and all this is going to take practice. So the more you use it, the more YouTube videos you watch, you're like, how do I do a fade? How do I fade out my audio? Well, YouTube it. Seriously, YouTube it. I'm going to say that all day long. I'm not going to go through these programs, how to do those things. That's for you to invest your time into doing, okay? So now the one of the next things you're going to need for gear is a VoIP application. So like Skype or Google Hangouts or Discord. All three of those are good options if you want to use use them for a uh, interview. An interview would be a great way to connect everybody. Now, I will say Discord can be heavy on the net usage sometimes, which, you know, if you're using video, it, it likes to pull on your net a little bit. But you, when you're doing this, you want to use video during your recordings, not just audio. You want to see the person you're, talk, you're talking to, okay? Now, we'll go over that in a little bit as to why that is that way, but it's very important, even if you don't have guests on, you need to see who you are talking to, all right? So, a VoIP application, and this is used during your recording, okay? A webcam. Now, I will say this, and chat, if I'm going too fast, you know, or if I'm too slow, just yell at me, it's fine. But a webcam, absolutely great to have. Because, you know, you want to see the person you're talking to. You can get one. as Now, I started with the Logitech 525. But to everybody who is here, I would probably recommend the Logitech C270. If you're just starting out and you want something that's cheap just, you know, to, to fill the need, okay? It's $17.99 on Amazon right now. Brand spanking new. And guess what? You get, uh, what was it, two? Is it, is it Prime? Yeah, but I think it's Prime too. So there's that as well. All right, $17.99. Now I'm going to say this as well. If you're looking to get involved in streaming, even outside of podcasting, this is the micro this is the webcam I use. It's what everyone's watching me on right now. And that's the Logitech, excuse me, C920. All right. This is a 1080p webcam. It's fantastic. It's 58 bucks. It's an investment, but it's good stuff. All right. Very, very good stuff. So you've got a webcam, you've got your VoIP application, all right? Um, you're, you've got, uh, let's see, recording software, okay? Well, I'll be posting links in Discord. This will prop, yes, most likely, yeah. Um, I'll probably post the outline as well, as well there. Um, so what's the next thing? This is your heartbeat of your podcast, and that is hosting, Okay. Hosting, like, what, what, what is it? What is hosting? In sh short form, it's the pulse of your podcast. It is the heartbeat. It is, for instance, I'm just going to use a company that I recommend, and that is Libsyn. It's a company that hosts your RSS feed because that is that is where everything stems from, and that is your RSS feed, okay? So Libsyn, all right? These people host your feed for you. So you can do your publishing, your publisher episodes. You, um, you can see stats, etc. They're going to host that RSS feed for you. And then you're good to go. Now, you've got all kinds of options. You've got, you've got different ways that you can. Um, and really, I would, in, I would invest in looking around. Okay. Now, granted, everything I'm recommending to you, I'm not taking a dime off this. There's no affiliate links. There's nothing, no sponsorships tied to this. None of that. Okay, so that being said, this is all just my personal experience and things that I recommend. Okay, now there's all kinds of different options. Some cost, some don't. Okay, there's a new one out called Anchor. 
It's new. A lot of people are going to it. I'm not a huge fan of it simply because they like they can take your feed and post it wherever they want to, and you don't you won't get credit for it. Um, you've also got Blueberry. That's the thing nowadays. Uh, Podbean, Buzzsprout, Castos, Podient, and my personal favorite, and that is Libsyn. Okay. Now, any experienced podcaster is going to tell you that you need to own your own feed, that you need to be hosting your own feed through like a you know a lot of some people use like a WordPress site, and that that's a beast in its own. And we're not even going to talk about that tonight. If you're just starting out in podcasting, you don't need to own your own feed. Okay. You can host one through one of these third-party programs, all right? So I recommend, and I've used this since the beginning, and I use it now, and that is Libsyn. It's kind of old school, okay? It's uh, It's been around for a very, very long time. And I'll go here while we're all sitting here, okay? Powerful podcast hosting, all right? So they've been around for a very long time, 2004. Right, so just a few years later, I started my my first show. It's a monthly subscription. Okay, now what does that net you exactly? All right, well, what you're gonna do, you're gonna get started here, and what does that net you? Really, what you're paying for is storage for your show. All right, so there's subscription options. The one that I use every month for Lore Seekers is the Libsyn Advanced 400. That's 20 bucks a month. All right. So they're going to host my podcast feed for me, handle all the publishing for me. They're going to send it out to Spotify for me. Don't have to worry about Spotify at all. They're going to they're going to handle it all for me. You get a you also get um, a, a free podcast website if you want to use it. Um, I don't. I never have, but you can. Uh, there's also an app as well that you can choose to pay for if you want to have an app for your show. That's something Cash and I've talked about numerous times. Um, but yeah, there is an extra monetary cost there. Okay. Stats. Stats are a big one. One of the funnest things about podcasting are f- is, is finding out where your listeners are coming from. It's a very cool feeling when you start your show, your first show ever, and you realize, oh man, I've got, I've got people listening in the United Kingdom. I've, I've got, I've got people in China and 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 Japan and and Russia, and then you and then you really start looking at the numbers that Libsyn gives you, and you see like, wow, we're huge in the United Kingdom. You, you never would have known that. I do not have that option, and that's something I'm a huge fan of and proponent for when it comes to Libsyn. Okay, is simply having great stats. You're also going to get a podcast player that you can embed in your website. Now, granted. I don't believe you can change the color of that. I haven't been able to figure that out yet, but I use that every single week at loreseekerspodcast.com. That embed player, I use it all day long. All day long, okay? So is the cost, how's the cost? 20 bucks a month? You know, if you can swing it, that's not bad. To me, I call that overhead when it comes to podcasting. That to me is always going to be there, 20 bucks a month, no matter what, no matter what. The rest of the things are a one-time investment in your microphone until you decide to do a big upgrade, you know? Your host for twenty bucks a month, you know that's your pretty much your recurring monthly cost if you want to use Libsyn, all right. So you know you, you've got your mic. You you I can't change the color. All right, well, Sonny, you're going to, have to let me know. <laughs> eight years in, seven eight years in, I still don't know that. But uh, here's a quick tip for podcasters: you are always learning. I'm still learning. There's things that I'm working on, trying to improve for myself. If you feel as though you have arrived and you feel as though you have nothing to learn, then you need to stop podcasting because it's a matter of time before your quality drops out as well, where you no longer have a passion for that just because it's like, yeah, I know how to do that. It doesn't matter. You don't have that drive, that passion for it, okay? So you should always be ever learning when it comes to podcasting, all right? So you've got your gear. You're like, all right, I've got my mic. I've, I've, I've got my webcam. I got my recording software. Now what do I do? Absolutely nothing yet. <laughs> Absolutely nothing yet. Now, wait, you're like, what? No, 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 no. You study and you practice. You're not going to put any episodes out yet. You're just going to study and practice. You need to understand how to use your microphone, how to talk into your microphone, 
Now I'm going to tell you right now, if you're using a condenser microphone like I recommended starting out, these microphones, they are hot. They will pick up things from across the street, depending on where you live. I've had, you know, I've done shows with uh, Cash in the past, and there's people mowing their lawn, houses down, but your condenser mic will pick it up. All right, so you want to do this re your recordings in somewhat of a quiet area when you're using a condenser, or so have some kind of windscreen or sound, you know, sound barriers happening. Okay. That being said, um, yes, you can use noise gates, etc., but uh, that's, you know, for you're just starting out, you're just learning, you're going to learn real quick that these USB microphones pick up everything. So practice, practice. How close do you get to your mic? Do you need to get real close up like this? Now, this sounds really good right here, right? I mean, it's picking up, you know, but I like to come back just a little bit, all right? So I like to say, like, you put a fist, if you could fit a fist in between your mouth and your microphone, that right there is money, all right? That right there is money. Okay, so then you're going you're to want to learn to practice with your recording software because if you're using Audacity, it doubles. It doubles as a recording, as a recorder for you. But also, what it does is, it can you can edit your shows. All right. Now it's not the thing with Audacity is there's definitely a process to learn how to do these things. Okay, but once you figure it out, and and again I'm going to say this. Uh, until I'm blue in the face. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. It's going to help you with everything, all right? And for those of us who are still joining us in the workshop outline, here is the link for you, okay? So YouTube, 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 everything, all right? Just learn. Take it all in. You don't want to start your show yet. Trust me. You don't want to start your podcast yet. You just want to absorb everything how to fade in a show? How to, you know, how do I cut? How do I cut these audio, the, the audio in, in Audacity? How do? How should my intro be? You know, Google all those or YouTube all of those things. Now we'll talk a little bit about intros later and and bumpers, etc. But practice, practice. All right. You're also going to need to understand how, depending on what host service you pick, you're going to need to practice that as well. All right. You're going to need to understand how to upload an episode. And look, I'm going to tell you, I, it's it's going to sound like I'm sponsored by Libsyn, probably. And I'm old school, all right? I'm old school. I Man, it makes me feel old when I say that. But, you know, I I love Libsyn. They are de they're reliable. They're dependable. And there's a lot of videos, a lot of good resources for you to teach yourself how to use it, all right? So one of the biggest things... What, you know, aside from gear, right? So let's say we're, we're we're moving on from gear at this point, okay? So one of the, one of the biggest things, not just your RSS feed, you know, the heartbeat of your show, but the life of your show is made up of show notes. All right, show notes, and I'm gonna pull some. I'm gonna type this here for you guys. This is a show notes example that you can keep, okay, for your own podcast, all right? Now, what I'm going to pull up right now while I'm doing all this live <laughs> is an example of show notes. And where are you? There you are. Okay. Bam. That's a little bright. Let's put this on. Boop. There we go. All right. So, show notes. You're talking... Like, how do I do this? You know, I, I have seen so many bad show notes from other shows in the past. And and it's just, it's not the person's fault. It's inexperience, okay? So that being said, show notes are the lifeblood of your stream, of your stream, of your podcast, okay? This is going to help you along the way, all right? So... What you're going to, you know, the, the template's been included, the example, you need to use this, okay? So whenever, and this is just a quick example from uh, a Lore Seekers podcast. You know what? Let's pull up a different one. Let's pull up, let's pull up the latest episode of Lore Seekers, all right? Let's turn off the, now we use the gray, we use gray on our, on our background, what you don't see in our shows, or at least normally we do, to eliminate the glare, you know, when we're streaming these live. But that being said, here is a live look at a 
episode of Lore Seekers. Everything that we do, all right? So you're talking like, what'd you miss last week? You know, in the beginning, no matter what you want to do, you're going to have introductions, okay? You want people to know who you are. Hey, I'm Jibs. Welcome to Lore Seekers Podcast. You know, whatever it is. You want them to know. So make sure you do your introductions. And then what I recommend moving into, and really all this is going to be based off of your show, what kind of show you're going for, you know, because there's different ways to do different things. That's the best thing about a podcast. A podcast is an artistic expression of its creators, okay? And so you can do whatever you want to do, but whatever you choose to do, I'm going to tell you right now, strive to make it the best it possibly can be. And having good show notes is the best way to start that process for you all right uh so you've got like for for an episode of lore seekers you've got notes or news you know before that when we have them we'll go through uh emails and voicemails we want to make sure the mailbag's present right off the bat you know we want our listeners to to know that they're important to know that their voice is the first thing that's played in the show but they don't have to wait till the end you know that's kind of standard wait to the end move it right to the front boom our supporters right in your face all right then we go to news and then you've got the other options you know you've got lore lessons you know uh and then you or for us and, and that's a segment of ours or then you want to close out your show and you know when you're closing your show you know if you want to do itunes review shout outs you can do those there um you can you know personal shout outs um for every, that's just a good practice for us uh, that we've always done and it pays off it pays off you know for every five star review that you get on itunes you give them a shout out on the show, all right? And, you know, I always read their review. If they write a written review, I will always read it, no matter what. Um, and then, you know, if they want to, you know, your social media outlets, where can they find you? You know, you're closing out the show, so you want to make sure and give shout out and love where you can and make sure that you leave them wanting. Where can they find more of you? How can they get a hold of you? You know, in our, in our case, it'd be a good place. So you can find more content at loreseekerspodcast.com. You know, or you can uh, check out our show on Twitter at Lore Seekers Cast, on Instagram slash Instagram, and on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Lore Seekers. All right. So you just plug that stuff, plug it because they want to know. If they've stuck around this long, they're going to want to know. All right. And if they don't, they're stuck around. So you've got them. All right. You've got them at that point. So how about it? Okay. So show notes are the lifeblood one of the biggest lifebloods of your stream or of your podcast, okay? So moving on from show notes, how do you, like, how do you you publish your first episode? Like, how does this, how does this process work? You know, if I were, if you were to sit down and, and, you know, the, the urge strikes you wherever you're at, maybe you're driving, you know, showering, whatever, wide, wide awake at night, can't sleep thinking about it. And you're like, man, I want to do a show. How do I do this? You know? All right. You get your gear. You start practicing and studying. You're absorbing everything that you can. All right? And then from there, once you've done all of those things and you feel comfortable, you feel like, you know what? I think I'm ready. And you'll know. You'll know. You'll have your intro done. You'll, you know, you'll know when you feel comfortable that you're ready to take this on. All right? So here's what you're going to do. You are, here's the step. Number one, you're going to record slash edit a preview to your show. And that is a 30 second intro or or pretty much is what it is like a 30 second um, trailer to your show. It's all audio, right? Unless you're doing video as well. So, you know, you want to tell everything about your podcast. Hey, so like if I was to do one just off the cuff, hey, everybody, this is Jibs. We got an upcoming podcast that we want to tell you about and that is the Lore Seekers podcast. It's completely dedicated to Elder Scrolls Online, and it's all for the new player. And just coming from the perspective of two casual guys who love the Elder Scrolls Online. The first episode is going to drop in two weeks. That is January 1st. So look for it there. January 1st, 2020, Elder Scrolls Online podcast that we call Lore Seekers. Something as simple as that. Have music playing in the background. Have the music fade out. Boom. You're done. You got that. Okay? Um, So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to upload this to your hosting service. Now, again, there's a reason why I didn't walk you through step-by-step with your hosting service. Okay? Because each one's going to have its own thing. Okay? 
Um, but you know, as far as you know, if you're using Libsyn, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of options for you there. And and um, you know, yes, I use that service, but please, I would encourage you go look at different options. Choose the one that's comfortable for you. It's not about oh, that's what Jibs uses. That's you know, that, you know, he, that's what he recommended. Pick what you feel is right for you, and that's got good reviews, great support. That's what you need. All right. So. Um, and by the way, a quick reminder to everyone who is here, if you have questions, we're going to do a QA and a at the end, save your questions and I will field every single one. All right. Every single one. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. All right. So next, what you're going to do after uploading your episode to your hosting service by following the steps that they, that they provide you with, you're going to want to go submit your RSS feed to podcast providers. Okay. So. What are podcasts like? What's provides? Well, that's the apps you're using. That's iTunes. That's Spotify. That's Google Podcasts and Stitcher. That's just a few to name. Now, granted, I will say this: iTunes is still, well, it's. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Our audience base, they use more than iTunes. They use other apps in a big, big way. Okay, every show's different. It doesn't really matter necessarily where your people are coming from. It's the fact that they're coming and you identify where they're coming from, okay? But in a general sense, iTunes is still one of the one of the one of underline top podcast providers, okay, for people to listen to podcasts, okay? Now, if you're like me, I personally used I personally use um, Castbox. I enjoy that one. It works well for me, but there's all kinds of options, okay? Um so what you're going to do is submit your RSS feed to podcast providers. And for everyone who's following along in the outline, there is steps or the site linked where you need to go. Okay. So you're going to submit your RSS feed. And then at that point, follow the steps there. They'll What they'll do, I'll speaking from experience with iTunes, they're going to want to approve it. All right. They're going to want to hear what they're going to be approving on their medium. All right, on iTunes. And that's why you did your intro or your trailer for your podcast. Okay. So, so they can get an understanding of what's going to be on their service. Okay. Now, typically, speaking of iTunes, it can take anywhere, I believe, up to 72 hours for approval. All right. And so and that's it. Once you get the green light, you've put out your first episode. Boom. Guess what? You're off to the races. You're off to the races. And that's an exciting moment. That's a proud moment. And I'll never forget it. Your first episode is out. You know, I was telling people that didn't even give two craps about it, but it was important to me because you've put the time in. You have studied. You have practiced the best way that you know how. All right. You've done everything you know to do. You got your artwork done. Everything's done. You put it out. All right. Ah, it's a proud moment. And you should be proud. Don't forget that moment. That's a cool feeling, all right? And so what's going to happen, if you imagine these podcast providers as a big circle, all right? So what they're doing is they're going around and collecting RSS feeds. And any updates that have happened on these RSS feeds, all right? In my case, it's going to go through to my Libsyn RSS feed. And it's always going to be checking for updates. In other words, new episodes, right? And so once you get that going, once you get to posting, guess what? You're getting that, you are getting that provider in the process. It's getting accustomed to picking up your feed. All right. Now, that being said, that's how you publish your first podcast episode. That's how you get started. Okay. Excuse me, I got to get a drink here. And it's a proud moment. It's absolutely a proud moment, okay? And so now here's kind of the things where like, there's a lot to gear. There's a lot to understanding, and really it's time. It's a time investment, right? But if, you know, if, you're, already in, if you're already here, then you care to learn. You want to know, right? So you're going to want to learn these things. You're going to want to learn. You're, you know, you're going to want to study. You're going to want to practice and um, take it all in because this is, I'm going to tell you right now, it is one heck of a ride. And podcasting, once it's in your blood, it is there. You are providing brand, don't ever forget this, 
Don't ever forget this. Don't ever discount, especially if you are a podcaster in a gaming sphere where Twitch is a big medium. Sometimes you can, you often can feel as though you've been left in the dust because you're not, you know, but you're not, you're not a streamer, but you're putting out the best quality show that you possibly can. Don't ever discredit yourself into thinking that you or your show, you know, isn't that big of a deal. It is a big deal because you've put the time in, you have studied, and you're doing your very, very best. Podcasting is a huge medium, a huge medium, okay? It's massive. There's people consuming more podcasts every day now. It's crazy. Go look at the stats. Guarantee you, guess what? It's higher than it was last year. It was higher than the year before that. It just keeps going. It's going. People are getting tired of commercials, you know? People are getting tired of, you know, waiting for their content. They want to get what they want. And they don't want these unbiased opinions, you know, that you're going to get, especially if you go to news sources on TV, right? So they want that unbiased opinion. They want to find a podcast that fits that for them, you know, that fits that need in their life. So guess what? They're going to look for you for a podcast. All right. So these are some of the things that I, the next thing we're talking about is host versus co-host. And these are some things that, this is where seven and eight years of experience really comes into play. Okay. Now, so like you want to start a show, right? So let's kind of backtrack a little bit and let's get an understanding of some things, all right? Outside of posting, you know, on your on your hosts um, platform, I, submitting stuff to iTunes, all of that. Let's, from a technical standpoint, as far as your abilities within a show, let's take a look at that, all right? So first things first, host versus co-host. So like, what's the difference? Is is there a difference? Like, is, is there certain jobs that are tied to certain, you know? Well, yeah, there actually is. See, a host's job is to keep the show moving. You've got a destination, right? So you are just, you know, you're keeping that thing moving from point A to point B. That is your job, all right? That means you're bringing in the bump, you're bringing in the next segment. You're moving the show along, you know? That is you. Don't ever get lost in that, Okay. Always remember, your job as the host of the podcast is to get you from point A to point B, to bring your listeners from point A to point B with you, giving them a listening experience, you know? Again, point A to point B, all right? The co-host job, it's crucial. It is, 100%. And these are all, like, at base, at in the very minimum, these are your jobs as a host and a co-host, Okay. Kovo's job is to support the show's topic, whatever you're talking about, whether it's gaming, you know, in our case, it's Elder Scrolls Online, through conversation. These are people that can talk, all right? These aren't people that are going to give, you know, like three-word answers. If you've listened to any episode of uh, the Lore Seekers podcast, you'll know that we like to talk. Cash likes to talk. I like to talk. And we'll get into more of that dynamic here soon. But um, that's the co-host's job is to support the show with conversation, all right? So if you're like, man, I want to start a podcast, and I, you know, this is like developmental stage we're talking right now, okay? You're like, I want to start a show, but I, I'm i kind of thinking I want to host, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for, you know? Like, I've got these friends, but I don't know if they would, you know, if they would fit. Well, here's a quick indicator, Okay. You want, if you're going to have a co-host on your podcast, then you're going to want somebody who you, in number one, you enjoy being around, okay? Because guess what? You're, you're going to work a lot together. You're going to work a whole lot together. You're going to talk outside of the show. You're going to answer texts, you know, um, for speaking for Cash and I. And the co- the, I don't like saying co-host because we're both hosts. This is a 50-50 thing at the Lore Seekers. And we'll talk about dividing show work here in a little bit, but it's very 50-50. We're both hosts. And so the other host of Lore Seekers, um, we talk all the time. All the time. We really do. He's my best friend, right? So for me, you know, we're talking out, you know, we're calling each other. (laughs) We're sending each other funny texts, you know, encouraging each other, all the things. We spend a lot of time together outside of the show. Unfortunately for us, it's not always in-game at Elder Scrolls Online, but hey, you know what? We're talking a lot. We're planning a lot. We're running ideas back and forth, right? Because with, a, with your host, with your other host of your show, guess what? You're going to throw a lot of things at the wall, you know? 
ideas. And we have thrown out a lot. And they may not always stick. But guess what? The point is that you guys are brainstorming, that you're talking. You're talking this out, okay? So you want someone you can enjoy being around. And also, guess what? <laughs> Probably the most important. <laughs> well, they're all important. That you enjoy talking with. Because you're going to do a whole lot of talking. You don't want to talk with someone that you don't click with. That's the important thing. The person that you have, don't ever, ever bring in somebody into a show that you don't enjoy talking with, that you don't enjoy hearing their conversation, that you, you, know, you want someone you can click with. Cash and I, we click. Everything that I am not, he is, and vice versa. That's what you want to find. And now, granted, a lot of our talking points have been built through years of friendship. So that is a very plus, if you, a very big plus. If you can find somebody who's a, been a friend of yours for an extended period of time, that's fantastic, all right? Now, three, if they, you want someone who likes to talk. I already mentioned that, but you, know, you don't want to have a host. I did a show a long time ago, and I did not get to choose my co-host. It was one of the shows I listed earlier. Not going to name it, which one it was, because I don't want to reflect bad on the organization or anybody there, but I could not choose my co-host. It was chosen for me. Well, guess what? The show suffered. You want to know why? Because this person didn't like talking a whole lot. This person didn't necessarily enjoy talking with, all right? And I didn't necessarily enjoy being around. I never really spoke with them outside of the podcast, right? So it didn't feel natural. It felt like it was forced, okay? And so it's important that you find somebody that likes to talk. And on top of that, one of the biggest ones, reliable. Reliable. I'm going to tell you right now, you want consistency in your podcast. If you don't have it, then you're doing it for nobody for nobody else but yourself. And that's fine. But if you want listeners, if you want people to tune in, you have to have consistency. And that's going to first start with the hosts being reliable to do the things that you need to do. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Now, granted, if you were doing a solo show, that's fine. That's fine. You've got, a, you've got an interesting dynamic there of things that you can do artistically. You can really um, get involved. You know, if you listen to any show, um, like any of the crime podcast, you know, a lot of times it's a single narrator. And you can do all kinds of cool things, you know. And your audio quality... Well, no, that's not true. We'll get to that. But you're you've got all kinds of interesting options for you. Okay, so if you're not using a co-host, there's a different dynamic, and it's a fun dynamic. Okay, but if you are, before you ever begin, you know you've you've selected your co-host, and you guys are just talking, you're hashing things out. One of the first things that you need to do, no matter before you move forward, is that you need to define the workload between both of you. So there is zero confusion. Zero confusion, all right? So, you know, you need to decide, are you, are you going to do all of it? Are you going to do all the social media posting? Because guess what? If you really, you're going to have to market your show, all right? You're going to have to get out there and market it because no one's going to do it for you, all right? So you got to, you got to like, all right, am I going to handle in the social media? Are they going to handle it, you know? Um Host may manage X, Y, and Z, and uh, other hosts, you know, A, B, and C, okay? That's fine. But it's important that you figure those things out. See, with Lore Seekers, we have, Cash and I have a very clear understanding of what we can do, what we're comfortable with doing, and what we want to do. And it works very well. There's a very nice parallel. Because no matter what you do, each host must do something they're confident in being able to complete on a weekly basis, depending on when you're releasing your episodes, all right? You have to have consistency. So, you know, for Lore Seekers Podcast, I handle um, show note development at, at its base level. We're getting stuff out of there. I'm yanking stuff from the old episode. I'm going to put, hey, what they can, uh, I'm going to put all the news, all the, all the mail together. I'm going to put the iTunes reviews in there. At that point, I am done. Cash comes in. Cash adds his lore lesson. He's going to also do the dungeon lore. He does both of those. And it's a phenomenal job. All right? So we split that up. All right? That is what he's comfortable with doing. That's what he's amazing at. And, he, you know, he excels at. And then I do the other part. And I also do the editing. And I handle our Twitter feed. 
and on top of the and cash handles our Instagram. He handles the other side of the social media. Okay. So I handle all the editing, the posting, um, base show note level, graphic work, etc. And cash does a lot when it comes to researching the lore for the show and, he, and, you know, really getting an understanding of these dungeons and, and other things. And he's also always brainstorming. One of the best things about cash having him as a co-host and really what you want as a co-host, no matter what is somebody who's always thinking. Somebody who, because creatively, there's probably going to be somebody in the podcast that's going to handle a little bit more when it comes to editing and putting things out. So your mind is zoned in there, right? So when I'm focused on getting the show out, um, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm doing the process, getting everything ready, I, had, I know I have someone in the background thinking creatively of new ideas and things. And that's a help. That's a huge help, having that in your show. Because it, it, it takes a load off one person and it spreads it out equally. Okay? All right. So that's co-host versus host. Host versus co-host. All right? And so now, uh, this is the part I've been really wanting to talk about, but uh, uh, except for the Q&A. All right? And that is 10 tips and tricks. These are things that I have learned over years of, of, of um, podcasting. You've had... I've had great success in things. We've had great success in lore seekers. And you know, we've also had failures in other things. Failure one of the best things failure is one of the best things in life that can teach you how to do it better, right? And you know, the first one that that is uh, I, I this is the this is like my swan song. This is I will say this to every new show, every new host above everything else. And that is be you, not someone else. Be you. Because here's the deal. People want to, people come to a podcast because they want an experience. They're looking for something. What are they looking for? Well, more times than often than not, when it comes to lore seekers, you know, oh, there's an Elder Scrolls Online podcast. Cool. I'll go check it out. Or, you know, maybe they have a recommendation from friends or family. You know, we've got people, their grandparents listen with their grandkids. You know, I mean, it, it, this is, it's a big deal. And so we've got all kinds of different people listening. And yes, they come there for the subject matter, but guess what else they come for? All right. You. They are going to, over the course of listening to your podcast, Guess what they're going to start to identify with? Guess what they want to become fans of? Or, you know, one of the reasons why they come. It's not just the subject matter. It's you. You have to let people have their, uh, the people that they're fans of. You know, we as hosts, there's people who are fans of our show. They're fans of what we do. It's important that we allow them to have those people in their life. Allow them to be fans of us. Don't cut them off or any of that. You know, you don't want to do a show. You don't want to do a podcast and put on a facade. Put something out there that's not you. That's not genuine. Right? Now, that being said, I did a show. Well, actually, yeah, it was a Level Up Morning Show. Right? Um... I was not myself during that entire 70 episode run. I think it was 70, what was it, like 72? I think it was 72 episodes. And I, during that entire time, I remember I was sitting down and I was editing the show and I sat there and I was listening to myself and I'm like, who is this? This, this isn't me. This is not me. Who is this? And that stemmed from trying to be something I wasn't, right? And so when it came to Lore Seekers, Fast forward years, all right, years in the future, sat down and record. The first thing I said to myself was, I'm going to be myself, and I'm going to be 100% genuine. I want to be as transparent as possible to people listening, all right? So that's what I did. And you want to know a secret? It paid off in dividends. Paid off in dividends, because what did I give them as a host? What does Cash give our listeners as a host? We give ourselves someone that you can um, that someone that you can relate to someone that you can get to know right because guess what we've got people who've listened over 10,000 hours in the past year of lore seekers I saw it was the other day on Twitter they go through our shows and they just listen they listen and then they listen again so be 
you. If the biggest, you can put on, and, and we'll go to number two here. You're entertaining somebody, but you don't want to put that before natural conversation. So yes, you're entertaining, right? Yes, you're putting on a show, but too often times, and this is just out of inexperience to a new podcast, they come on there not being themselves like, hey, everybody, welcome. This is the show. You know, welcome, welcome, welcome. This high energy, and that's not them at all. Like, like that steam's going to run out. At some point, that steam is you know, it's going to be out the window, and they're going to be, and your listener is going to get confused. They're going to be like, "Is is he no longer passionate? Are they are they wearing out?" And all along, you were just portraying something that wasn't yourself. So, your entertainment value comes from being you. Like when we crack jokes and stuff on the show and cash, we make fun of each other all the time. That's real. That's genuine. We genuinely make fun of each other daily. It's kind of pathetic, but we do it, all right? And so that's our dynamic, all right? Uh, when it comes to lore seekers, someone described it the other day as news and lore and all these things for Elder Scrolls wrapped us in, wrapped in this ball of insanity that try, you know, trying to stay on the rails. That's what lore seekers is, and it works. It works. So you're entertaining people. But at the same time, always remember, be yourself. Now, number three, this is something I picked up along the way over podcasting. This is something that originally people would just say, all right, it's time to flip the switch, you know, like to go live. And the more I podcasted, the more that the term flip the switch has kind of developed its own meaning to me. And so here's what it means to me. And this is something that Cash and I live by. So... There's times, you know, you, you look, life is life, right? Like, it's not always roses and, you know, oh, majestic, perfect music. Life is hard. Life kicks you, kicks you in the nuts and keeps kicking when you're down, right? So you're not immune to that, especially if something happens right before you're recording. It's recording day. You're an hour out, and boom, life happens in a big, big negative way. Like, how do you respond to that? <laughs> what do you do, right? Well, there's a term, and it's called flip the switch. Thank you for posting the workshop outline. I really appreciate that. And to all who are listening, if you have questions, we're going to be, that's where we're going next. Save your questions, Q&A, all right? So we call that flip the switch. That means you don't allow outside situations to affect your show when you're recording. That means you make a mental switch in your head that, look, life right now is kicking me in the nuts, but I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to my listeners. I have a responsibility to the community outside of our listeners. Because at that point, once you gain traction, guess what? You're an influencer. You influence the community. So you have a responsibility to put your best foot forward every time. And Sonny says in chat, and it's true, it's game time at that point. You flip this mental switch. Hey, I'm turning off the negativity of everything that's happening right now, and I'm focusing on having a good time here and doing the best show I can. Remember that. Remember that. Flip the switch. Do not forget that, all right? Take the time to prepare good show notes. That's number four. And no, I say this often. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. Show notes. They are, if the RSS feed is the heartbeat, your show notes are the pulse, okay? Your show notes are going to get you through your podcast. It's going to help you relax. It, you know, designing show notes and the template I've shared, you don't have to use that. That's just an example, okay? But you want to develop something for you that feels natural, something that you can go through because you're starting at the tippity top of your show right off the hour. You know, we start lore seekers like, Hey, welcome to the show. You know, once we get started, this is lore seekers podcast, you know, you're in it. Okay. So you need to develop something that feels right to you. And seriously, take time in crafting that craft because guess what? Good show notes. It takes practice, but I will tell you, Having good show notes is a relief because then you can just focus on the show, all right? So learn to create something that feels natural to you that you can you can naturally flow through, okay? 
Number five, use video chat with co-host when recording. Now, I told you earlier we were going to talk about that. That's a big deal. All right. That is a big, big deal. Used to when I first started podcasting, I I, I just did audio. Never saw the person. Never saw my co-host ever. You know what happens when you can actually see the person when you're doing a video chat? See, whenever we do Lore Seekers, uh, we use Google Hangouts. I'm a big ha- fan of Google Hangouts. It's great for, you know, for two people in particular. It's great, you know. Um, and uh, it allows me two things. Right off the bat, two things. One, it eliminates a lot of interrupting each other, right? Because when you're first starting your show, there's going to be times when, guess what? You interrupt each other, okay? It just happens, you know, especially when you're first starting out. Um So having that video, you're going to see the person when they want to talk. You know, a lot of times I know Cash over years and years of knowing him personally, but also doing the show together. I can read his body language. I can tell when he's wanting to say something just by seeing him. And that is incredibly important. You're going to you're going to help eliminate um, interrupting each other. You're going to learn the body language of your host, your co-host. Okay. So that way, what that is also going to provide for you in the long run is a better flow for your show, all right? You're going to know when someone's going to want to talk. I'll oftentimes be talking, and uh, I can tell Cash gets right up on his microphone. You know, sometimes um, his mouth's closed. Sometimes you can even see his cheeks and start to inflate just a little bit. And I know when watching him, all right, he needs to say something. So I'm going to make my point and then stop. And then he cuts right in. And it flows. It's just like a constant wave, you know, just going, right? So I cannot recommend this enough. Video chat, something, whether it's Skype, uh, Discord, or, um, you know, Google Hangouts. Great resources. Use them, okay? Number six, this is if you have a co-host. We've oftentimes gotten people who've asked us, how do you guys get that good audio quality? Sometimes we've gotten this from other shows. And it's simple. For best audio quality, especially when you have somebody, you know, I would absolutely love to be able to do this podcast locally and cash live, you know, next door and we do this. But guess what? I live in almost the other opposite side of the USA. So what do you do for audio quality? Well, here's what you do. For best audio quality, each host needs to locally record their vocals. All right. Then when the show's done and over, have that person who's not doing the editing send you that audio file. All right, of their vocals. So, you know, if you're using Audacity, uh, sometimes what what we would do in the early days, I would have Audacity, Cash would have Audacity, and we'd say, all right, we're recording in three, two, one. We both hit click record, and that's how we got started. And then when we're done, he he would upload that audio file to Google Drive, which we're getting ready to talk about. I would download it, put it in Audacity, and sync it up. That's one of the best way, one of the best ways to get good audio quality because then you're not dependent on internet connections, right? I mean, you are during the show to be able to see each other, chit chat, and all that, but you're not their vocal quality. You receiving their vocal quality is not dependent on the internet connection, all right? Bandwidth, okay? It's a big, big deal. Number seven, make use of Google Drive. I'll say this all day long. Use Google Drive. Use Google Drive for your show notes. It's great for show note collaboration. Um, uploading your vocal files, your raw vocal files. Um, storing graphic files. Like, we use it. every. And you know what? We've got 100 gigs. Uh, I think it's for, what was it, 20 or 25 bucks for a whole year? I mean, that was a no-brainer. No brainer because it, we Cash and I we you know we share the 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 G drive. We share everything, you know. We know the passwords to everything. We both do. For emails, everything, Google Voice, when we get our that's where our vo- our voicemails come into play. Use G Drive, Google Drive for everything. Use it to store backups for your graphics, backups for your show, you know, for your intros, etc. Store it there. It's fantastic. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your computer. You can use it on your on your um, tablet. Okay. Um, so anyway, Google Drive. Use it. 
Use it, use it, use it. Uh, keep show intro to 30 to 40 seconds. Now, that's a, you know, whenever you're starting your show, you don't have to have an intro. You don't. Oftentimes, nowadays, that's the style. They just get started. You know, there's silence. And then, hey, everybody, welcome. This is the show, blah, 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 blah. I like to have an intro. I like to have some kind of music that brings them into it. That it's getting, it's like a mini movie trailer, right? And for me, you know, in the times past, uh, my I would always strive somewhere around 30 to 40 seconds for an introduction. You don't want to feel like it's dragging out. You know, and a good indicator of that is when you're designing your introduction, you need to go back and listen. You need to send it to your to your girlfriend, to your wife, whatever, boyfriend, husband, wife, grandparent, whatever, whatever you want to send it to, and let, let them listen and be like, this is how I'm going to start my show. Does it feel too long? Because it's going off feeling. Anytime I bring in the Lore Seekers podcast, from the beginning of the show, when we say last week on Lore Seekers, and the music kicks in, once last week on Lore Seekers finishes, and it's telling them about what happened last episode, to when the intro starts, every week, that's just about the same, you know, based on last week on Lore Seekers, the audio file sometimes, it, it, it can be shorter. So when I bring in that introduction, every single week, it's off of feel to get those fades right, to get to where one's, was one's dropping out, the other one's coming in, and you're going, you know, just, a, like I said, just a wavelength, right? People just riding the wave and enjoying what they're listening to. And so, you know, find that pattern for you when you're designing your introduction. There's, and you know, the best, you know, what's great resource for podcast intros? Podcasts. Go listen. There's all kinds of different styles. I've done so many different kinds of intros <laughs> over the course of my podcast career and you know it, sometimes we like the most latest one on lore seekers we chose it just because it it was fun it was you know what it wasn't some like uh, a elaborate radio intro which we could have done but we're like you know what let's do some metal and let's just have some fun so that's what we did and you can do that too it's totally up to you all right so 30 to 40 second intros number nine this is big this is big. Uh, this is going to help you in your, for your listeners' sake, really. And that is designing audio bumpers to use as segues from different segments. So, again, you're going to hear Lore Seekers a lot, all right? And I'm sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> With Lore Seekers, we have a segment called News. Bumper plays at the top. Here you Tamriel's got some news. All right. The listener knows. All right. We're transitioning from the introduction to the news. Right after the bumper, we started. And then from there, there's another segment that we call the lore lesson. And that's where we talk about lore of the Elder Scrolls online or Elder Scrolls in ways that you can understand it. You know, that the normal person can understand it. So when I'm going from news to the lore lesson, I provide a bumper. What does that tell the listener? That tells somebody... That, hey, all right, we're moving. The show's moving. You're the host. Guess what? Your job is to do what? Move the show, point A to point B. So we're moving, so we're going from news to lore lesson. All right, cool. That That's a good indicator that they can themselves accept. All right, cool, we're moving on. All right, because sometimes, I mean, you don't want a listener to ever be confused. You want them to know what's happening. And um, that level of transparency, especially when you've got bumpers, it's huge. It's fantastic. So anyway, design audio bumpers, you know, it's, it's, it's crucial in my opinion. Okay. Now, granted, all of this is based off the style of show that you want to do, how you want to do it. Um, you know, you may design a show that doesn't need bumpers because it's one continuous thing and narration. Okay. So anyway, bumpers. Number 10, this one is up for opinion. This is up for depending on the style of show you are doing, and also it's dependent on your audience, all right? And that is you want to try to keep your podcast between 45 minutes to an hour and a half. That's, you, can, you may be able to squeak that back to 30 minutes, and you know what? That, that, this is totally flexible. If you only have 25 to 30 minutes or even 15 to 20 minutes of solid content, that's just as good. You don't want to design it. You don't want to just keep talking just for the sake of keep, you know, just, just to talk 
and not really give any good substance to the content that you're portraying, that you're giving your listeners, okay? You know, if you've only got 15 to 20 minutes, that's fine. But when you've done podcasting for a while and it's, you know, comes, the more you do this, the more natural it'll come to you. And especially depending on your subject matter, you know, for an episode of Lore Seekers, it's 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And, you know, you know, the funny thing about our audience, they want more. <laughs> so guess what? If you've got a listener, if you got a listenership that they want more and you have the content to give them more, give them more. Do a longer show. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what people want and you enjoy doing that, give it to them. Give it to them. You know, sometimes we get, we, our show goes up to two hours. That's a long show. That's a really long show. But you know what? People love it. They eat it up. All right? So that is 10 tr- tricks, tips and tricks for podcasting. All right, so everyone who is here, everyone who has been listening, I've been talking for about an hour and 10 minutes. You've heard me talk and talk and talk. All right? But now what I want to do is field your questions. I'm going to move this over here so I can kind of see this a little more naturally on my screen. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to enable slow chat. I think I know how to do this. Uh, Apparently, slow mode. Boop. Uh, Nope. Okay, let's, let's not do that. All right, so if you have a question, if there's something that to everyone, this is to everyone here in chat, if you have a question, here's what I want you to do. Capital letter Q, and then your question. And I will start fielding these, okay? Um, what I will also do here, while I'm doing this live, <laughs> what I'm going to do is, where's an episode, where's that episode of Lore Seekers? You know what, let's just do a new drive. And I apologize. Um, I'm going to have to do this all here solo. We're going to field your questions, okay? Question. All right, let's do this here. First one up. Question, is your comedy the show notes? Is my comedy the show notes? Hmm. What do you mean? I mean, I will say this. All the things that we do in Lore Seekers, when it comes to the comedy side, when we're making fun of each other and doing all these things, that is 100% not planned. 100%. Yeah, you're going to hear a lot of clicks here, folks. Sorry, I'm just cut, copying and pasting as I see these questions. I want to field all these until we're done, okay? There is there is no limit tonight. This is like Texas Hold'em, no limit. Okay. In the show notes, yeah. No, there is no none of that's written in there. It legitimately happens on the show. And that comes through um, years of podcasting with your co-host. That comes naturally. You will begin doing that naturally in the podcast. All right? And it will fit, too. And that's the important thing, too. You know, it'll fit. Woo! Look at all these coming in here. All right. Let's grab another one here. All right. I think another person had this question. How do you handle music? Royalty-free is obviously the ideal, but so many podcasts, especially around games, rely on recognizable music. All right, so how do I handle podcast music? Well, oftentimes what I do, especially if I am doing a podcast on a game, I will incorporate parts. One of the things I used to do was... I would incorporate parts of their trailers, different cuts of the music, and I, and I would put it over narration. Um, I, I don't have it here handy with me. I wish I did, but I let you listen to the uh, Wildcast uh, introduction that we had. You know, that's a lot of what it was, was um, cuts from trailers added with narration, etc. Now, I will say this. Let's Let's change the screen here so everyone can see what we're doing. Now there is, uh, let's see, there is a site. We're going to do all this live here, all right? Uh, what's it called? Uh, audiojungle.net, all right? These, and I will put this here for everyone who needs it. This is a place where you can get music tracks and audio tracks, okay? It's a great resource. And, you know, you can also Google royalty-free uh, podcast music. Because this is a big thing that comes up often. It really is. You know, um, you're kind of riding that fine line, right? Um, and you know, we'll use tracks from Elder Scrolls Online. They don't care. 
it's free publicity for them. You know, it's not being abused in a negative manner. Um, and so we've never had a problem with that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's feel. Where do you go? Okay, there's that one. All right. Uh, let's see. Next, uh, how do you find advertising venues to start? So advertising venues. So you mean like um, Audible? Um, there's different ones that you can Google. Um, if you're looking to get a sponsorship for your show, uh, I will say this. Um, it it pays to give your listeners something more so uh, g- getting some kind of sponsorship or some something that um, really gives your listener something fantastic. All right. You know, in the case of Audible, we use Audible because it's a fantastic service and they get a free audio book. I guess the what probably the last, like the one I'm right now is 16 hours long. So they get 16 hours of free content. Okay. And, and you know what? That's a win. That's a win for the person who is listening. If they choose to make use of it, you know? So if they go to audibletrial.com forward slash lore seekers, and this is the bit for audible, you sign up for the free 30 day trial, you keep it or cancel. Either way, you get a free book. All right. And two audible originals. That's a big deal to someone who's listening and they're a huge fan of your show and your show's done for the week. Well, what are they going to do? Shoot. Listen to an audible book and you get one for free. All right. So it's important to, you know, it's important if you're going to get some kind of sponsorship, it's important that you look at something that makes sense for your podcast. You know, what is the, what is the, like, what's the medium? Is it gaming? Okay, well, maybe look, see if there's anything out there for gaming, you know? And the great reason why I choose Audible is because the books that are covered include gaming books. You know, if you listen to World of Warcraft books, um, all kinds of things, Star Wars. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's what I'm listening to right now. It's all there, okay? It's all there. So I would recommend Googling podcast advertisements if you're interested in that or sponsorships, but pick things that make sense. Things that really resonate and things that, I mean, ultimately, if you're going to choose that, that you know what, you're going to get a nice reward when they do choose to use that. If they're choosing to do it, they want to support you because it's obvious. Look, it's a some kind of promotion, but if they're doing choosing to use it, they want to support you anyway. So you know, make sure the service that you're getting something out of the service, and not just the company that they're going towards is getting all of it. You know, you're you're providing that for them. Make sure you're getting something in return, all right? Do something that makes sense. What's the rule for using snippets from TV shows, movie songs, say bumpers? Um, more times than not, it's a no-no. Unless you've got a license for it, it's a no-no. Um, now, just uh, you can pretty much get by with it if you, you know you use um, you know, a quick clip of a show. More times than not, they're not going to come out and chase you down, you know, um, you know, oftentimes you've heard, um, Step Brothers, a clip from Step Brothers, you know, a five second clip used, you know, that, that's just a tiny thing. They're not going to come out and chase you down. Now it's one thing if you're Joe Rogan, it's one thing, you know, you, they have to really watch their copyrights. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull this question over real quick so I don't lose it because I'm answer. I want to answer everyone. Seriously. We'll, I'll go till till we got it all done. Where do you get bots in your chat feed? So when it comes to Twitch, the bots I use are Nightbot. Pretty simple, Nightbot. Recommend equipment needed to podcast. Okay, you'll find that, and I will give you this link. We talked about it earlier. Um, let's see. Does anyone have? Let's see. I don't think that's the right one. The link to the. I'll just give you this. Uh, the outline. That's what I'm going to direct you towards. Okay. There we go. Boop. Go there, and you're just going to scroll the tippity top, and uh, equipment is all listed right there with links for you. Okay. You've got USB microphones, free soft editing software. That's to get you started. You know, it's really not a high entry point, a high cost point um, when you're getting into this. Now, when you're on a budget, like I was when I started podcasting, look, a hundred dollars sounds like a million dollars. Okay. I get it. So while you're saving for the things that you need, because that investment will last you, look, I'm the example, prime example, years with this with this microphone, okay? Years. Uh, it'll pay off, okay? 
It'll pay off. Uh, let's see. Just grab this question here. Make sure if you are going to ask a question, start it with Q so I can easily see it. Just to help my eyes. Uh, how would you do the first ever episode? Full-blown intro, longer, shorter. I would do it exactly how you're going to do it every single time. Because familiarity is a big deal. It's a big deal, all right? It's a big, big deal. Because when they come to your show, it's going to feel familiar to them, okay? It's going to be... Sorry, there we go. Um, it's going to be... Um, something that resonates with them every time. So if it were me, do your intro. Do I mean, do it the same way every time. Now, with Lore Seekers, we like to have fun, right? Like, whatever, you know, I, we'll, every so often, we'll change our intro because it's fun, you know, and, and it's fresh. You know, people like that when it makes sense. You know, it's, you know, for a long time, longest time, with the introduction to Lore Seekers, anytime somebody would listen to the podcast, we like to tell a story. And that story is still very much alive, and you may see a return in the future. It is that person who is walking? You can hear them walking. We call them the unknown traveler, right? And that is for a sign here, the unknown traveler's tavern, right? Well, there you can see it, yep, right there. And so, anyway, it's the story of the unknown traveler who's walking to the tavern to hear two people talk. All right, that was the story, whether you caught it or not. But that was the story. And so I would say, have fun with your introductions, but be consistent and start your show how you're going to start it every single time. All right? What kind of apps do you use for podcasting in general? Audio, video, putting it all together. So what I use now, I don't use Audacity. I use Sony Vegas Pro uh, 17, I believe is the number. It's the newest one. Um, Cash and I both use it now. We've got multiple licenses. And um, it's very, very easy, very, very handy for me to be able to go through and edit things, okay? It's expensive. Look, I'm not going to lie. It's expensive. Now, I will say this. I will neither confirm nor deny all the apps of things that I used when I started were legal versions, okay? I mean, I'm not going to say I did that, but I'm not going to say I didn't do it either, all right? So you have fun with that one. Um, let's see. Once you're proficient with recording, editing, and posting a show, how long does it take you? And how do you get your spouse on board to spend the time doing that? Okay. So when I first started, editing a show took me about three, three and a half hours, maybe four at some points, because you're learning, right? It's a learning experience. And I will say before you ever start, this is a hobby. Okay, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your spouse is on board with you doing this hobby and letting them know like, hey, like there may be some nights where I'm just in front of my laptop or my computer a little bit longer than I usually would be on, a, you know, every week, you know, maybe, maybe one night or something along those lines. And so it took me about four hours now. It takes me somewhere because of the software I use and everything I have now. Um if everything's kosher and everything comes out like it's supposed to, uh, about 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Let's see. Let's grab that question and put it here. Um, and so anyway, I will say this till I'm blue in the face. I am only, I mean, I'm only podcasting because I'm in agreement with my wife that she wants me, you know, that we're in agreement. Like she's for me for this. If I don't have my wife's support, I am nothing. I am nothing. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. If my wife is not on board, it is, I, I, I have zero confidence. I, I, she's everything to me, okay? So as long as I have her support in podcasting, it's, imp it's empowering, okay? It, it, is a f it, it gives me drive to do everything I do every week. She is the light. She doesn't know it. But she is the lifeblood for me for this show. It means everything to me. So I will say that as I tear up because I love my wife. But seriously, it means everything to me. It's important that you have your spouse on board. Okay. Uh, let's see here. How does one find a subject to talk about? I have subjects I'm very passionate about, but I can't think of something for longevity. Well, that's something that you're going to, that's kind of one of those things like how, like how, 
like I can't answer that for you, but pick something that you feel you can talk about weekly. And I would say that you can give, I'm just going to shoot this number out there. It's not necessarily a hard number or an official number, but that you can dedicate 20 episodes to. That's 20 weeks, all right? 20 weeks, that's five months, all right? So I would say subject matter that you can give 20 episodes to, okay? Now, that's a lot for a first-timer. You could even say 10, you know? My first, op- you want to hear something funny? My first podcast, two episodes. Two. <laughs> that was my cutting my teeth, learning, all right? But, you know, if you're going to go into this, and hopefully these tools help you far more than what I had starting out, do something, let's just say 10. Do something you can dedicate 10 episodes to, that you feel you have content for 10 episodes, okay? Uh, where do you get your sound bites? All right, so my sound bites, the things that I that I get here for the show, I design. Um, now, granted, um, some of the things you'll we pull from, from the game, Elder Scrolls Online, so here's a quick trick. If this is anybody who's doing a gaming podcast, you want to know a quick tip? Your audio settings in your games are huge. They're huge. You know, especially if you're using the video experience where you can screen cap whatever, you know, it's on your, or there's all kinds of programs for that, but screen cap the audio that's being played. So you turn all your ambience down, everything down except the dialogue, right? So many episodes ago, we had the speaker from the Dark Brotherhood. In Elder Scrolls, from Elder Scrolls. Hi, I was just gushing on you. Said you're the lifeblood of my show, and I can't do anything without you. I love you too. Mwah. There's 50 people watching. You want to say hi? Yeah. Oh, here. This is the barmaid. This is the barmaid. Say hi. Hi. That'll be all right there. But hi. but uh, anyway, when we first started, and the speaker from Dark Brotherhood was in our show, how I got that was I went in the game. Turn everything down aside from dialogue, okay? Then you hit record. Then you nab that audio file and throw it in your recording. Oh, look, see? They're all talking to you. But, um, and so when it comes to snippets, now we pay for, um, we paid for a bundle, and this came many, many months after starting the show, all right? Many months, when, you know, through support of our listeners. Uh, we don't, and by the way, Going back to sponsorships earlier, we don't take a single dime of that for our own bank accounts. Everything that we earn for the show goes right back into the show. You guys helped us buy the software we needed for Vegas Pro. You guys helped us improve our sound quality through a library of professionally mastered sound effects. You guys did that, okay? And so that's how we got ours. We bought these bundles, okay? And I don't have one in front of me. Maybe I do. Let me check real quick. Mm, hang on. Because if, if I can get this for you now, you know, that, that'd be great for you guys. Let's see here. Yep, there it is. Boop. All right, so this is the company that we use. For a lot of our sound effects, um, and I believe that this link is going to take you to one of the bundles that we purchased right there for all who are in chat. It's asoundeffect.com forward slash. In our case, uh, it was uh, the fantasy game pack. Okay, so here we have to do. Careful, watch that. Let's drip. Watch the heater. <laughs> it's cold down here can't feel my toes but uh anyway so that's the bundle we use it's not it's not cheap but it was an investment that we knew it would pay off for us to get okay um all right so i hope that kind of gives you a better understanding uh let's see let's make sure i didn't miss it oh i just got a couple here all right boop Put that in here. We're going through them all, folks. So don't feel, don't be afraid. You know, don't be afraid to ask something. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. How did you set up your space to record? Okay. So I'm gonna drop out these old questions here to help me out. Um, really, for me, th- this what you see here, surrounded by sound panels, that came <laughs> this year. Like that's a new addition. I never used to have that. 
But what I started in was an attic. And, uh, you know, there just wasn't a whole lot of reverberations off the walls the way the attic was was shaped. So that kind of helped me. Um, but really just what you need is a, especially when you're using a condenser, starting out, get you somewhat of a quiet place where you can record. You know, I, I know people who uh, they made their recording studio out of taking out their closet, stuff in their closet, putting their computer desk in the closet, and they talk at the wall. And that's a great way to help eliminate, you know, reverberations. There's also things that you can buy. You know, you can buy sound panels that wrap around your mic. Different ways to, you know, just just Google that. Look it up. That's that's one of the fun things about podcasting because you have so many options. And you can really make your show yours. All right? So take advantage of it. Seriously, just have fun. Look things up and have some fun. Uh, all right. How important is the tone of positivity in a show? You know what? That is a, that is a per show thing. And it starts with the hosts. Now at Lore Seekers, we don't end a single segment on a negative manner. We never have. We never will. Because we believe in being positive about it. And quite frankly, now we'll criticize things when things need criticized, but we'll do it in a way, A, that makes sense, B, that is respectful of the people who put their time and efforts into this game, and C, because guess what? Whenever you you know you have negative tones, guess who guess who that reflects on? You. It reflects on you. And I have listened to shows where they're just complete, just bagging on something. And I'm just like, you know, it could have been done better. Could have been done better. And so the power of positivity, that's, that's kind of weird saying that out loud. But, uh, you know, when it comes to lore seekers, to us it's important. It is important. Because, you know, when you get <laughs> when you get some of the emails that we've gotten about what this show means to people, um, people who had cancer, people who couldn't play, but they were able to stay connected because of your show. You hear things like, "This show connects brothers." And like there was, a, there's a, there's brothers that, you know, their their careers take them out and about all over the U.S. And one of the ways that they would stay connected was the show. When you get stuff like that. I don't want to bring those people down, and neither does Cash. It's important to us. It's important for us to to have this positive outlook. And, and, and really, it's not so much a choice. It's, hey, that's who we are. That is who we are. Like, we're not putting on a facade. We're really not. Like, this is how we look at life. This is how we look at it. Because of experience that's taught us the things of getting to where we need to go, you know? So... I would say the tone, the tone has to be genuine and it's up to the host to decide, you know, how they want to portray their criticism, how they want to talk about the game or the subject matter. Um, But you know what? In our case, when it comes to Elder Scrolls Online, the way that we maintain our positivity and how we do it and how we choose to criticize the game is respectful. It's important to us. All right, so how do you make time for everything behind the scenes? (laughs) I get asked that a lot. It's like, you have a career. You have a family. What the heck? How do you do all this? You know, and um, we do. We have, uh, we're approaching 4,000 followers on Twitter. We're in uh, a lot of countries. I'm not going to say how many, but we're in a lot. And Maybe I'll wait till the second anniversary of the show to tell you. Every week. Uh, and we've got well over 1,300 people in our Discord channel. How do you make time, make time, make time for all that? You know, even get to play and do the show notes and editing. One of the best things that you will develop as you podcast is your routine. Now, used to, I would have things mapped out mentally. Like, all right, Monday's my day off. I'm not doing anything Monday. Tuesday, I'm starting to think about the show, get things together. Wednesday, I'm putting the show notes together. You know, boom, boom, boom. Thursday, I'm doing the show. Friday, um, 
uh, Thursday I'm doing the show and editing. Friday it's going out. You know, I think that was my old routine. Nowadays it's a little bit different. You know, when you've podcasted as long as Cash and I have podcasted and you're as comfortable in your subject matter and know, have an understanding of what you need to do to get yourself prepared, you know, it's not as a time, um, the, the time is a little bit different nowadays. It's not as harsh. Really what it is is you got to set up, um, you got to set up things for you in your life that make sense and things that a schedule that's going to allow you to keep going. Like, for instance, one of the ways, this is going to sound weird, but one of the ways that I can make time for everything is because I'm constantly fueled to do it. And I'm constantly fueled to do it. Now, granted, in a time sense, sometimes it's early morning, I wake up. Sometimes I just didn't sleep well. And I'm like, you know what? I'm awake. Why not wake up and do something You know, for the show? Um, oftentimes it's in the evenings, you know, when I'm editing, et cetera. So your work schedule is going to play a part in that. Um, setting aside time. Granted, there is a sacrifice there, you know, when you may want to do other things, but you know you need to handle show stuff. So that comes with dedication and, um, you know, just doing the same thing week in and week out. Now, that being said, how do I make time? One of the things I make time is maintaining uh, passion and energy for the game. It's important to me to have off games to play. This keeps me rejuvenated for the show. It keeps me passionate for Elder Scrolls Online because it allows me to stay stoked about the game so I can come right back into the game. You know, maybe one day I don't play ESO. Maybe I'm playing something else. Maybe I'm playing uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 or Elite Dangerous or, you know, I've been playing Tink Around even with Fortnite lately. You know, just all kinds of things. You know, things to keep me fresh. That's what keeps me going. That is my, like, if I don't do that, that's my kryptonite. Guaranteed. Guaranteed lore seekers would be done in in a month. (laughs) And so this is one of the ways that I preserve myself. And it's important that you, as a host, recognize what things you need to do to keep yourself fresh, okay? While still maintaining dedication to your craft and to your into the game. Because yeah, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of times I'm offline just so that people don't know I'm online so I can play and um, let the officers handle everything. So it's fantastic. That's how I do it. Uh, what gear, mic, headphones do you recommend for someone who is more advanced in audio podcast production? Well, to be honest with you, and I'm going to say this again, YouTube's your best friend. And really, it's going to come down to the budget that you're looking at. Um, what I'm using right now is somewhere around a $1,200 setup, $1,200 $1,300 setup. I'm using the Shure SM7B. I'm using a Rodecaster uh, Pro. That's where everything's done. And I wish I had a third webcam I could show you, but I've got all my board, my board right in front of my gaming PC. Um, my gaming PC, everything I do, is built around the show. So... I use a silent, I don't use a mechanical keyboard. I have a silent keyboard from Red Dragon here at, 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 the, at the studio. It allows me to type to cash while we're doing our show notes. While we're doing our show, silently, you can't hear it. And uh, I don't have to worry about editing that out. And on top of that, I can I use it for gaming as well. It's fantastic. I love it. All right. Um, so that, all that being said, no, I'm not sponsored by Red Dragon. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I use. <laughs> Same with the mouse too. But um, anyway, and so... It really, it comes down to, um, there's a million different ways to do your podcast setup, seriously. And the more that you look into it, the more you're going to see that. And you're going to, and again, YouTube, 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 seriously, go watch. There is so many videos and I know cause I was just looking them up months and months ago before I upgraded this setup. This setup is less than six months old. I think it's close six to six months to a year. And um, you need to identify two things. Um, Your budget, number one. And number two, um, you need to identify how many things you're wanting to purchase. You know, I went with the Shure SM7B because it had been, this was my first real upgrade since I started podcasting. I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to upgrade, I'm going to really upgrade. So I did. This is the same microphone that's used on a whole lot of podcasts. I mentioned Joe Rogan earlier. That's one. That's the one they use. Uh, then the board I use, that everything is done right here. All the recording. 
I don't use the software anymore. I use the Rodecaster Pro, and it has all my sound effects built in, everything for the show, everything that you see live whenever you come to Lore Seekers Live at twitch.tv slash Podcast. It stems from this board. The only thing that does not is the background music, simply because I don't have that much space on this board to put it on here. Maybe I need to look into that. Maybe get... And it's powered by an S- a mini SD card, this board is, for memory, okay? And uh, otherwise, everything that you hear uh, is all done from this board. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. And it, what this allows me is because no matter what, sometimes you're going to have software failure in podcasting. When you're using software to base your recordings around, you're going to have, uh, from time to time, your podcast, your file may get corrupted. It may happen, all right? That's one of the best things about doing a show live on Twitch. Uh, for instance, this last episode, we had a snafu in the background. Um, you know, a file didn't uh, was uh, didn't end up getting uploaded in the time we time frame we needed it to, um, and we no longer had access to it. So guess what we used? The stream, the the uh, Lore Seekers Live. That is our backup. That's one of our backups. We have probably about two to three now, but that's one of our backups. And it came out sounding pretty good. We're pretty pleased with it. And so, you know, having um, extra backups, it's fantastic, especially when you're doing a show live. Um, all right. So how do you go about showing your subs, resubs? See it a lot on a lot of podcasts, including this one. All right. So uh, whenever you're doing a show... And, and really, this comes down to a, a flavor perspective, like how you want to do your show. Whenever we're doing a live... I got to get a drink. I'm sorry. You hear my voice is getting raspy. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Um, whenever we're doing a show of, of Lore Seekers, it's important to us that we maintain the quality of the show as much as possible. So when we're doing this, now, lately, you know, like, uh, we, we'll get a raid from Zynode or whatever, and we genuinely love Zynode. Good dude. Great guy. He's humble. You can tell when you interview him. You know, there's some people you interview and you're like, eh, that person's more about themselves than their craft. And that, you know, their character, eh, it's all right. But with Zynode, I really, really like that guy. So, you know, he came in with a 300-sub, 300-person uh, raid. We put that in the show. We talked about it while we were doing the show. But you know what? Otherwise, most times, um, we will pull snippets of, of good points um, that you say. But um, for the most part, we don't interact with chat. We most certainly don't do subs, um, donations, any of that stuff. No, 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 no. Because guess what? This, as far as streaming, when it comes to podcasting, guess what? Streaming is just a tool. It's a tool to be used your podcast is going out to people all over the globe. I mean, I, I say, when I say this, I mean it. Lore Seekers is global. We've got people I'll never meet, and we call it limited fame. Sonny Ravencourt and chat from University of Coruscant knows. We call it limited fame. You may have some, you, you know, there's people listening from all over the world, okay? There may be one right next to you at, at your local hardware store, and you never know it. It's limited fame, right? And so it's important for us to maintain the best audio quality show as possible because, yes, we're streaming. Excuse me. But this is a tool. It's something that's being used to per, to put the show out and get it out in front of more eyes because streaming is such a big deal in gaming nowadays. So at the end of the day, though, you need to maintain your quality of your show. Stay focused. Stay focused on your subject matter. Stay things on that's happening. You know, now granted, especially when you've had some whiskey and you <laughs> and you're having fun in your show, you know, things may get a little loose and that's okay. That's all right. You know, the important thing as a host is to keep the show going from point A to point B. And also, you know, your co-host understands too, especially if they're in it and they want the thing to, su- to succeed. Okay. Okay. With a uh, question with show notes, script versus point form notes. Now I don't read verbatim whenever I'm doing Lore Seekers, unless I'm reading a news article 
where I feel it would be best if I read it to you or unless I'm reading a quote. Um, show notes for me are bullet points. They're things that you get to talk about. Anytime we do like a, um, a uh, article from Elder Scrolls Online, a lot of times I am rewriting that to kind of fit what I know I would feel comfortable saying. And oftentimes... I'm cutting that article up in pieces. So they're listing, you know, they're writing things out in paragraph form. Well, guess what? I'm cutting that up into bullet form. And you know what? You're going to get more comfortable doing that as you do your show notes. And I would say this, no one wants to sit here and listen to someone read the entire show. It's acceptable to read something when it needs to be done, which we do um, minimally in the podcast. Now, uh, our lore lessons are read, but Cash does it in a good way just to where it, it doesn't, it, like, it's like you, I mean, you know he's reading it, but it doesn't feel so much that way. It's like we're all learning together, right? It's this really interesting dynamic that kind of happens. And so you don't want to sit and, you know, hear, now it's one thing if, if that's the gist. Is that your show? Are you reading lore books? Is that the point? Well, then at that point, people know, hey, that's what this subject matter is focused around, then they can automatically accept it. Like, hey, I'm coming here knowing I'm going to hear somebody uh, reading something. They come expecting that, okay? But I will say this, be genuine. Don't just sit and read the entire time. Be genuine, okay? So if that, if that, and you know, and sculpt your show notes, get used to doing your show notes. And by the way, to all who are here, if you have a question, uh, this is the Q&A section, I'll be happy to answer it. Do a capital Q, and then your answer is just so I can see it, okay? Thanks. Um, sculpt your show notes in a way that feels right to you. I, when I put the show notes initially together, I'm writing things out based off how I know it feels comfortable to me to relay this information to the people who are listening, okay? So that's what I would recommend. Um, so I can't choose one or the other. But I will say this, it's acceptable to sometimes read things. Um, but you want, you know, you want to be able to go through the show in probably not full on uh point form, but you know, a healthy balance of things. All right. All right, let's see uh what else we got. Question if you're podcasting on your own, what's the best way to get feedback on your show before it's posted? Is there a forum where other podcasters hang out that might listen and give feedback? There's actually a Reddit. Now, I don't go there uh, ever, really. I, I try to stint. Typically, I think Lore Seekers was on Reddit. Uh, I put a thing, couple things out last month. But typically, I stay away from Reddit. But there is a, a Reddit for podcasters that you could probably post at. I'm not sure. You know, it really depends on the rules. But really, the best asset you have is sending it to a fellow podcaster. If you have a friend who's podcasting. Um, or, you know, maybe some close friends of yours who would be willing to check it out. I mean, because worst, worst case scenario, if they're your friend, you know, they'll give you a listen. They'll help you out. And so, yeah, give it to any of your friends, um, people you respect, people that respect you, and start there. You know, the, the ultimate really is to have a uh, someone who's a friend of yours, a private friend of yours who does podcasting and that's been in it. That's to be honest with you, that's fantastic to have because then you can bounce ideas off each other, right? And now, University of Coruscant on, on, uh, in, um, in Twitch right now, Sunny, we've bounced things off before on on shows. And it's, um, you know, it's worked out well that way. All right, so next question. Who do you use for website hosting? So when we first started out, we used Wix. And it was fantastic. It worked well for us. Until we really realized that we needed more. <laughs> we needed more options. And once we recognized that we needed more options, that's when we made the switch. And let me tell you, 100 and some posts moving manually was awful. That was just the way it ended up having to be done, which was awful. But we moved everything over to WordPress that we use um, currently, uh, I use for hosting, I think we use justhost.com. It's a annual thing that, you know, for an in our case, we paid up front for a certain amount of years for, all right? So then we don't have to worry about it. 
We'll handle it later when it needs to be renewed. That's fine. And I've used Just Host for a very, very long time on other websites for company websites, etc. And I haven't had any problems with it. All right. So hope that helps you. Um, so, I, you know, Wix was good to us when you're first starting out because you can do a free site and still make it look good. I mean, you'll have the little bar at the top if you want to have a free website from Wix. But, you know, it's a it was a good place for us. It felt good to, to me to use. So I think that's the important thing is choosing something. I mean, because there's also Squarespace as well. Um, that's another one. But it, what's important is using something. And if it's podcast friendly, you know, podcast features, that's a plus as well when you're first starting out. But, you know, pick something that um, feels good to use. Feels good to use and is low cost start now. Okay. Okay. Can you recommend user-friendly software? I'm horrible with software in general. Okay. Uh, starting out, to be honest with you, there's a there's several different audio recording uh, options, I believe. Now, I will say, until the cow comes home, use Audacity. It's free. A little bit of a learning curve. But it's pretty good software. Excuse me. It's pretty good software. And it's a great way to, for you to get started. Okay? So check out Audacity. It's good for recording. It's, you can edit. All right? It's all kind of right there. It's a good way to get you started when you you know you really don't know a whole lot of, of the ins and outs of things. All right? And honestly, there's a great like resource. There's a great resource community around it. I mean, it's been around a while, and that's important too. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, have you ever tried the free version of Vin DaVinci Resolve for video editing? I, if you have tried it, are there any cons? And negative. I have not tried DaVinci Resolve for video editing. I'll be honest with you, I am awful at video editing. Awful. I have always been awful. That is my absolute weakest point in the entire, whole entire world. Well, guess what? Who likes to do it and dabble with it? And that is cash. So, any video stuff? You will never see me editing any of that. I'm an audio guy. That's what I do. I like to invoke emotion through podcasts and through audio stuff. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I can't give you an answer. But, no, I've never used DaVinci Resolve. Um, but now, as we have Sony Vegas Pro 17, I do any video editing if I choose to start to learn more about that and that's what I'll be using where do you advertise a new podcast well there's all kinds of different places you can do it um, you can use social media the, the obvious the given um, if you are doing a forum if you're doing it for a video game you can use make use of their forums we never did at lore seekers I honestly don't know why we, we never made an introductory post of who we are. Because, you, you know, a lot of these forums, they'll have, you know, uh, player-made creations. And, um, you know, you can take advantage of that. I'll be honest, we never did. And I don't know why, but people know of us. I mean, and, you know, you can also do Reddit as well. Um, but really, you need to figure out where people are gathering for your content and start posting. And you're going to market, 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 market some more and do a little more after that. And guess what? More after that. You're going to do a lot of it. Okay? So get prepared for that because you're going to be doing it. Um, and, and, you know, if you're going to do a social media outlet, pick something that feels natural to you. For me personally, uh, no matter what, any social media platform, it's a tool. It's a tool to be used to get stuff out for your podcast. What feels natural to me? Twitter. So I host and or I handle the Twitter feed for Lore Seekers Cast. I put all my time into that Lore Seekers Cast feed. Very rarely do I post on my personal Twitter feed, really, because I just don't, you know, I don't, I don't have a whole lot to say very much. Like I, I am very focused when it comes to handling show social media, and I get it. It makes sense to me. I know exactly how to use it, how to get what I need out of it. And so for me, most of my time is spent, and I enjoy it too. It's important, you know, if you're going to do a social media outlet to pick something that you enjoy, that you enjoy using. I enjoy using Twitter. So all my time I invest into the Lore Seekers cast Twitter. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think this one was asked earlier, but about sound slash TV shows. Uh, if I'm discussing a particular topic, such as reviewing an episode, would it be fair to use a brief soundbite or snippet? Technically, when it's under copyright, you're not supposed to. But that being said, 
if you're a small fish in a huge pond and you use a quick snippet, more likely than not, I'm not saying this is okay. I'm just saying they're not going to, more than likely, you're just some tiny, uh, tiny fish starting out or, you know, with your show, they're not, lawyers aren't going to come chasing you down. Okay. They're just not. Uh, question. Sorry for having a second question, but I have intense anxiety. How do I get over being nervous and just being myself? You know, that's funny. I have done shows for a very long time. And still, there are times, you know, sometimes maybe it's a mixture of just, you know, chemicals in, in our bodies and, you know, stress from the day. You know, sometimes you would sit down and do a show and you, you just feel nervous. You know, you feel a little butterflies. You know, that's okay. The most important thing is be yourself. When you're dealing with anxiety, don't try to be something that you're not. Be yourself and just talk. Have a conversation. You're gonna, it's gonna help you get over that. If when you're having a conversation, especially with a co-host, with somebody that you know and you like and you enjoy, just talk. Hit record and then just talk. Forget the fact that you're recording. Just talk. And then over time you'll get more more and more comfortable. You'll get more and more comfortable with what you're doing. You'll get more and more comfortable doing a podcast. And then you may find yourself where it doesn't bother you as much. Now, granted, it still may bother you, but it may not bother you as much. And it may, and that'll and you will continue to develop as a host, your presence on a microphone. You know, this, I'll be honest with you, this microphone, the only thing I think about nowadays is how darn close to get this thing to my face. Like, it just, it just, it, what it becomes is an, ex, is an extension of you as you're doing your show or as you're doing, um, whatever, you know, a dramatic reading, whatever you're doing, you know, podcasts can be, the great thing about podcasting is it's, like I said earlier, it's an artistic expression. And there's a million different things you can do. A million different things. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you feel is the best way to find new audiences when starting out? Consistency. Consistency. And being different. Being the best at what you can do. Doing the best you possibly can. When we came into this, the Elder Scrolls Online sphere, it was one of those things where, like, you don't, the rule really was, the unwritten rule, one of the things that, that you do, you don't, you don't start a podcast for a game that's four years old. Like, this was our, you know, this is a year past years thinking. That was the thought process because it's already been done, you know? Like, what hype is there? But, we didn't we didn't care and we're like how many shows are there actually out there and at the time there were two shows one's no longer running and the other one currently still is and that's tales of tamriel we're like all right how can we do this different and with a spin on it so for us it was like we wanted to give every time somebody comes to the lore seekers podcast it's more than just two people talking to us we wanted to give them an experience we want to give them Tamriel, when they can't be there. We want them to hear the tavern sounds and the things. Because, you know, that's where a lot of people would gather. In uh, in the old days, medieval times, the tavern. That's where they talk, right? And so we wanted to bring that uh, Tamriel into the show. And so every and one of the ways that we stood out and continue to stand out is the way that we do all our bumpers. Every single bumper that you hear when it's going from segment to segment, is something that can be done in a tavern. Things that make sense. At one time, we killed Stuga. <laughs> uh, we cast, cash casts a spell. Um, you also, nowadays, you hear a, a town crier. You know, you can hear that. We're in an indoor-outdoor tavern right now in Volume 6. Um, you know, you can hear the barmaid. You know, that she approaches us for our drinks, you know. So we wanted to do something different in that respect to stand out but also just to give a fresh take on podcasting Elder Scrolls Online. And when you go into this, one of the other things I said was being consistent. If you're not consistent with your show, if you're not releasing the same day every week, and I would even go as far as to say close to the same time frame, if you can, not everyone can and that's okay, but if you can, try to keep it around the same time frame because guess what? People base their mornings they will base their schedule they will even mentally 
make a note of your show releasing the following day. They look forward to hearing your show. When you get fans who listen, you know, you are going to you're going to have an audience. They're going to come to expect your show. And it's important that you are consistent. If you are not consistent, doesn't matter how good your show is, doesn't matter how great you sound, guess what? You're not really going to grow. And you're going to frustrate your audience because they can't depend on you, okay? And obviously, quality. Be the best you can be. Strive to be the best out there. You know, do the best you can. That's always important. That, you know, that goes for anything in life. Do the best you can, all right? It's important. Put all your energy into what you're doing. If you're having to divide your energies in a million different places, then your show is going gonna, gonna to hurt. It's going to hurt your show because you could totally be taking your show to the next level but you're being you're focused on so many different things and I've done that you know we've done podcast networks we've I've done all that stuff I'm done with that I've been there I've lived it I've I've, I've done it I'm not saying it's bad to have a podcast network at all um, but yeah you know we don't we don't do that there's a reason why I have managed multiple shows I have done all of that and you know what I will say this little kids put your muffs on it's better in life to whole ass one thing than to half ass two things. All right? And that's the motto I live by. That's the motto Cash has lived by after I told him that. And so that's how I live. All right? You can choose to do it whatever you want, however you want. But I'm going to say this when you're able to put all your energy into one thing and to make it the best you possibly can, you're going to reap the rewards from it. All right? Being consistent, you're going to reap the rewards from it. All right, so forgot to put that with my question, but have you run into phasing issue when dealing with multiple mics or phantom power noise? Nope, nope, not at all, because I use one mic. I don't have any problem. I don't worry about any of that stuff. I just don't. I only have one mic here on my board. Don't have to worry about it. Um, I don't. Um, don't have any new uh, noise. Don't have any problems with my setup. Uh, how do you go about planning and getting guests on the show? All right, so if I'm going to get a guest on the show, first off, if it's a developer, there's a there's a there's an appropriate way to approach developers, right? Developers are busy. Developers are you know they've got a million different people pulling on them. Okay, the important thing is to be respectful. And ultimately, just ask, just ask with what you want to do. Um, important thing first off is identifying. The method of a, of contacting these people, not not just developers, just people in general. You know, Lore Seekers is on Twitter in a he pretty heavy way. So guess what? A lot of our conversations with guests starts at Twitter because that's where we connect with a lot of other content creators, uh, with influencers, with developers. Um, we've got developers in our Discord now. So you know, it's just you know, different things happening all over the place. Um, sometimes in the past, uh, email that was, you know, back in Wildstar days, I'll never forget it started with, um, uh, started with an email to the community managers, your community team. That's your in when you're first starting out, because you know, ultimately you're going to have to market yourself because no one's going to do it for you, but their I mean, their, their job is being, is being involved with the community. And they love community, love seeing creation. So they're more than likely, guess what? They're going to want to hear your stuff. So that's how you do it. And so really it's identifying where they're at, um, approaching respectfully. And to be honest with you, like you can have a guest on early in your show, your show run. But in, if if you haven't gotten your craft together yet, and really, those first five episodes, you're just figuring stuff out. You really technically in a heavy way, because every every week you're gonna grow a little bit more, okay? And you're really just figuring out your craft from a technical standpoint. Those, and then the first ten are you're figuring yourself out on the microphone. Cash and I, even with all the experience that we had, when we came back to the Lore Seekers podcast, we were nervous. We were nervous because we're, you know, 
you know, we've been off from podcasting just, you know, for about a year, year and a half. And it's like, do, do we like, do you think they'll listen? Do you, you know, you have all these things running through your mind and ultimately it's just, you get out there and you do it. Right. And so for us, those first 10 episodes was just kind of getting reacquainted and getting comfortable again, you know, when, and it's funny when you go back and you look at, listen to your old episodes, it's going to be like looking at your high school yearbook. Okay. It's, (laughs) it's almost cringeworthy. When I go back and listen to the first episode, I was doing that the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awful. (laughs) How did we ever get featured at elderscrollsonline.com? How did this happen? <laughs> oh, thank you, God. But, um, you know, it, it's fun. It's fun. And uh, so to, I would say this. Don't worry about guests for at least at least 10 weeks. It's different when you, you know, you're, com- you're fresh coming off another show or something or, you know, you have a lot of experience or, you know, you, you feel that you're confident enough to do it. That's another thing. But make sure that you've got your show sounding tight because you want... Anytime you have a guest, anytime we have someone on Lore Seekers, behind the scenes, we tell them this. Our job here today is to make you look good. I want you to be comfortable. I want you to have a good time. And I want this to be the best interview experience you ever had, ever have. And you want your show quality to reflect that. So I would say this, until you feel you are confident in your show quality. Don't have anybody on yet. Keep figuring out what you need to do to get your show the best you possibly can. Don't worry about guests. They'll be there. Just focus on your show. Make it the very best because guess what? That's even a representation of that. That's going to make that person on your show look that much better. And you want them to look great. You want them to sound amazing. You want them, you know, that's like a that's like a um, extension of respect from you to them, okay? So it's important. All right, so let's see. Do I am I missing any more? Nope, nope. All right, we've got two left. Unless any, we got any more. Uh, I'd love to start a podcast with a friend, but I'm a bit of a control freak. Any tips? <laughs> yeah, I have those. Um, when I first started casting, I had a mentor. Uh, taught me. A lot. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of one-on-one with this person, but I spent a lot of time studying. I spent a lot of time researching and paying attention to things. And and I should have said this earlier. One of the greatest examples for me was understanding, watching a show, a TV show, and understanding how the host moved between segments and appropriate timing. That taught me a lot. Uh, my son, I was a stay-at-home dad. I watched ESPN at the time. It was Mike and Mike. You know, it's no longer on there anymore. But it taught me timing. And it taught me how to appropriately move a show forward. And so at that time, I was learning that. Well, another thing I picked up from my uh, mentor was doing it all on your own. And that's not the way. Here's the, here's the thing. Now, it's different when your co-host really doesn't have proficiency in that but when they can let them help uh cash and i did a podcast called the level up morning show and it was very much understood and this was years ago (laughs) that he was a co-host i was the host i did the show and he would just show he was job was to show up and talk and that sounds heartless and cruel um but that's what cash was great at and um that's how it worked and fast forward years and years, you know, after the Overwatch initiative and then go to Lore Seekers, right off the top, I said, buddy, this isn't about me. This isn't about you. This is about putting out the best quality product we possibly can. This is 50-50. We are spreading this out. We're, this is a joint venture. That right there was the best decision we ever, ever made. Because we're both incredibly passionate about the product that we put out, we both care, and as a result, and we're both invested because we both have, we both like I talked about earlier, we have an understanding, a clear understanding of responsibilities of who's doing what, 
and we do a great, and you know what? I can say this confident. We do a great job at it. It'd be, if we were doing horrible, I tell you, <laughs> but we do a good job at it. At least I think we do. It, 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 the system works. Okay. So I would say this, don't try to do it all on your own. You're going to burn yourself out. At one time I was doing it all on my own, all the editing, everything, show notes, every, I mean, everything in show notes, everything. And I was doing that for two shows, two shows. It burnt me out, completely burnt me out. And um, so I would say this, like, if you're going to, you know, if you're wanting to do a podcast with a friend, let them get involved. Let them get involved and you'll reap, you'll reap benefits for it, especially if, you know, if they're capable of, of getting involved, you know, and in more ways than just talking. I mean, let them, 100%. All right, and I think this is, is this the final one? Yeah, I think this is, unless we have more. Uh, any advice or reference videos for how to mitigate slash eliminate mouth sounds and breathing? Yeah, uh, you're going to be looking into a noise gate. That is a big deal. And uh, here, in fact, I have one built into this microphone. It's on right now. Here's what happens when I turn it off. Here, I'll show you. Do, 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 Stand by one. Here we go. Nope. Let's just click on the mic. Boop. And advanced. All right. So I'm going to take the noise gate off right now. See how it just kind of picks up everything? Can you hear me breathing? All right. So I'm going to turn the noise gate back on. Hear how much quieter that got? I'm breathing right now. Can't hear it, can you? So that right there is going to help eliminate that. Quick tip. And also, and I will say this again, YouTube. Go check it out. There's a lot of great ways um, uh, that you can master your sound. Um, and that is really one of those things that you're kind of ever learning at because you're always going to be feeding off of somebody else. And so... Uh, learning from somebody else, someone who's had um, a different kind of podcast experience in their in their run for their shows, and so you're always learning. So go to go to YouTube. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, it looks like that is. I think that's about it. Wow, friends. Oh, we got we got one more. Okay, I'll, I'll answer this last one here. This is from Sunny. And fun fact, I was a big fan of Sunny before I started casting. And uh, he helped me on my very first show. What do... Oh, nope, we got one more. What do you do when the subject matter that you're talking about no longer interests you? (laughs) I know where that's coming from. All right, so here's the deal. There was a time when we did a podcast called Wildcast, and Cash was on it. It was about Wildstar. We're doing the show. Game's not out yet. We're having a good time. We're looking forward to playing. Gets around time to release. Game comes out. And now we're playing it. And then we get the real this the frightening realization that we do not like this game. And then you're like, wow. And I was the host. I was the one who got people involved. And I'm like, what do, what like how do I handle this? Long story short, moving forward. Here's what I did, and here's what I would recommend. First off, you need to make, you're going to have to have the hard, heart to heart conversation with your hosts if you have them, if you're not a solo show. That you guys, I'll be honest with you, I'm really not enjoying this game. And then, and you'll kind of have, have picked somebody out as you've done your show. And we had like four or five hosts, which is way too many. Way, way too many. Okay. Well, just way, way too many. And um, <laughs> you identify somebody who can take the show over. And that's what I did. There was a host called Avid Guru. Uh, he's on Twitter, actually, still. And he ran Wildcast until the show completely um, stopped. And this was multiple, multiple, tens, multiples, multiples of tens of episodes later. Right? I mean, he ran it. And he did a great job. And um, so identifying, you know, who could take it over. And uh, it he did a great job. He 
You did a great job. Um, and so how do you handle it? You have that tough conversation with your staff, not staff, with your hosts about where you're at with the game or whatever you're doing and was figure out if anyone would be interested in taking this on or continuing this venture themselves in a different manner, or maybe a different show. And then you would direct your listeners there. Could get a little messy, but look like that's never a comfortable place to be. It's, it was an awful realization. I, <laughs> I, I be honest with you. I vaguely remember it now years and years later, but I remember when you're playing it, I do remember this playing it and then it hits you like you're unsure that unsureness of, I don't know if I like this. That's the part I remember. And that part is frightening because it affects everything else. Okay. Everything else. All right. Your boy drill. Let's see a uh, question. How do we achieve God's status like you and cash? <laughs> Oh, buddy. Well, that's very kind of you. I appreciate that. But uh, we're a couple of humble people that love to help people, that love to be as transparent as possible. What you see is what you get. This is not a facade. This is who we are, and it's paid off. And I hope to everybody who's here, um, chat saying it's because of our lack of hair. Yeah, we do have a lack of hair. We're very aerodynamic. <laughs> But to everyone who's here, I hope that tonight, and to everyone who's listening on YouTube, I hope um, this has been helpful for you. I hope that you are able to achieve all of your goals. I hope that you're, you know, that you can just find success. And if there's anything I tell, I've been telling people lately, someone in my life, I'll tell you as well. Don't get so caught up in the destination that you forget about the journey. Just enjoy it. Enjoy podcasting. Enjoy learning, all right? Have fun. That's the thing. Have fun, okay? To everyone who is here, if you want to learn more or you want to listen to our shows, you want to listen to, well, we, we mentioned Lore Seekers often. To everyone here on YouTube, go to loreseekerspodcast.com. There's stuff there, okay? Um, we may put this out on our actual audio feed, uh, really, it's going to be based off of feedback off of uh, everyone in, in uh, Twitter and Discord, et cetera, and YouTube. But we will do that as well. Just um, We need the feedback for it. Uh, but anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Um, and I, again, you know, save this outline. Save it. Remember it. Keep it. Okay? Um, and, and same with your show note template. I hope that's a good start for you just to kind of get you in the right direction to developing show notes that work for you. So anyway, this is all I have to give you. I hope you enjoyed this. <sighs> now for the next adventure. I'm going to go write me a novel, I think. <laughs> so anyway, all right, YouTube, have a good one. All right, that recording's done. Chat, everybody. Who was this helpful? Was this helpful? I, I want I want to, I kind of want to talk to me, babe. Talk to me. I, I want to know how you felt. I want to know everything. I don't know. I want to know. Uh, yeah, just go knock out a novel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This was, this was, yes, 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 sir. Absolutely. Okay. Good, 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 good. 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 Okay. Fantastic. As someone with experience in all of this, it was immensely helpful. Fantastic. Good, good. That's what I want to see. All right. Well, good. In all seriousness, no, uh, this was step one. Uh, you took a lot of notes. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. You know what? You can always refer to the stream. So there's that as well. Thanks, Sonny. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, we will be putting this on YouTube. Um, so you can always look for it there. But um, anyway, yeah, no, this was the first step. Now that this is done, I can f now focus on on uh, writing. That I'm kind of a one, you know, when you get involved in casting, the more you do it, you know, you, you're you you're very focused on the things you're working on. And, um, you know, you have these extensions of things you're going to work on. So, you know, offshoot, this was the podcast workshop. And there's no part two. There's There's no part two. This is everything. Everything I know. 
I, I, I have nothing left to give you. So I hope that <laughs> just run with it, run with it. All right. Oh, uh, goodness. I mean, what are you doing with your novel after doing it? <laughs> Jibs by offering Mike a friend and <laughs> consistency. <laughs> oh, thanks, any face. I really appreciate it. Uh, Androx, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you all so much. Well, I don't want to keep you here. I would love to just keep talking with you. I really would. Um, but I want to let you go have your night. Uh, so thank you, everyone who came. Um, seriously, it means a lot. I really didn't know how many were going to show up. But you, you all came out, and I really appreciate it. So have a good night. Enjoy podcasting. If you're going to get involved, if you're already involved, I hope this was um, informational for you and refreshing for you. Um, enjoy the ride. Enjoy it. You're not going to get everything right, and that's okay. All right? Just enjoy it. Tell the bar, maybe we said thank you for spending time with us. I will most definitely tell her that. Much love, my friends. I hope you all have a great night. And uh, what is today? Saturday. So, yeah, we'll be back with Lore Seekers next week. All right? Much love. And um, dilly freaking dilly, right? Dilly freaking dilly. I'll see you guys. Take care.